I'm Dr. Eric Schoomaker. I am a Lieutenant General of the United States Army, retired. I am the former, immediate former, past Surgeon General of the Army, the 42nd Army Surgeon General. I'm currently serving as the Scholar in Residence and a Distinguished Professor of Military and Emergency Medicine at our own federal university here, the Uniformed Services University in Bethesda. Tell us about this new research initiative between the NIH and the VA. Uh, partnered with uh, the National uh, Institute on Drug Abuse and the Veterans Administration to free up funds uh, amounting to almost $22 million over five years, $21.7 million, to be addressing problems of pain and its associated comorbid uh, uh, um, issues such as post-traumatic stress, sleep disorders, uh, depression, uh, a whole array of things, concussive brain injury, or as it's often called, mild uh, TBI or traumatic brain injury, um, to, to seek uh, complementary approaches that don't rely upon conventional, especially strong and potentially dependency generating uh, drugs. What is the burden of pain in the military? Well, the military is a, a lesser included case of the whole U.S population and we know that pain is among if not the most common reason that people seek the help of a physician, nurse practitioner, a physician physician, go to a clinic, go to a hospital. Um, the military has the added burden, especially over the last decade plus of, of fighting and training to fight our wars, of, uh, of rising problems with pain uh, not only from wounds in combat uh, or injuries, but from just the wear and tear on all our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, coast guardsmen of, uh, of the training itself. Fighting pain in the U.S. military, veterans, and their families. Thirteen new research studies will address pain and related conditions with non-drug approaches. U.S. military after combat deployment suffer from chronic pain nearly twice the general public estimates. This group's opioid use is also more than three times that of general public estimates. These rates show an unmet need for managing chronic pain with non-drug approaches among U.S. military personnel and veterans. In a very recent study that was published in uh, JAMA Internal Medicine, in fact, it drew real uh, spotlight to the problem of, uh, of pain uh, within otherwise uh, young, healthy uh, troops, and that was that returning uh, soldiers were complaining of pain far above what the population at large uh, adjusted for, for, for age and sex. Uh, and a, a large number, a startling number of them, were taking uh, opioid uh, drugs and other drugs uh, for, for that pain. We estimate that uh, a returning combat brigade, such as was studied for this, uh, for, for this report, um, has almost twice as much on average pain as the population at large. 44% uh, of soldiers were complaining of pain and were taking drugs for it. Why do we need other treatment options or complements to standard conventional care and or medication among this population? Well, I think there are several reasons we would be looking for effective complementary uh, non-pharmacologic approaches. The first is uh, this rising, rising burden of uh, dependency that we're seeing on prescription drugs and our, our increasing disturbing uh, reliance upon uh, opioids and uh, opium-like drugs uh, that are com in common use around, around the country and around the world. Uh, we know, for example, that in, in uh, almost 40 states in the Union today, uh, death from accidental overdose from these drugs exceeds death from motor vehicle accidents. It's become an epidemic problem in the, in the country. And so that alone, I think, has led us to look to uh, complementary approaches uh, uh, to, these, to the treatment of uh, pain and its associated comorbid problems. Uh, the second is that we are becoming increasingly aware that some of these practices, although ancient, in their origins are, are actually quite effective. And as we get better and better at designing and looking at the integration of these practices into uh, conventional approaches to chronic pain and their associated problems, or as a standalone uh, modality for treatment, 
and especially if they can be used for self-care, um, uh, you know, uh, methods such as meditation, uh, guided imagery, uh, yoga, tai chi, uh, qigong. Uh, these techniques, music therapy, uh, among the most uh, effective that we have seen studied, uh, these techniques uh, allow our patients to uh, either reduce the, the burden of, of uh, of drugs that they might be using or avoid them altogether and uh, serve as a bridge uh, between uh, uh, effective um, uh, treatments that they're seeking. So I think there are several very compelling reasons that we're looking for these complementary approaches that either could stand alone or more likely be integrated effectively into conventional treatment. To learn more about research on complementary health practices, go to nccih.nih.gov. Follow NCCIH on Twitter and Facebook.